blink of the shit while we're doing it. Hello, Craig. Hello. So. Okay. All right. Now, now that everyone has left, we can start talking about a gun buster. Or aim to the top, which is the Japanese title. So it's actually pretty uh, accurate if you think about what happened to the show. Yes. Um, by the way, that the title is a reference to a uh, to uh, to a, a Top Gun, uh, an American movie um, with Tom Cruise in it. I haven't watched it. I think it's something to do with. Uh, Aviation, military aviation. Yes. And yeah, all, I, all I remember is the song like "Danger Zone." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and um, and the rest uh, and M two um, is a, a reference to a Japanese manga anime. Uh, I can't remember the title, but but it's basically a sports anime, a tennis a girls tennis anime. Um, which I think some people describe it as, I've heard it described as uh, Ashita no Joe, but for girls. Um, yeah, I might uh, have heard of this. I might have heard of this manga. Uh, what's the name of it? Give me a second. I put it in my this review. Sound, this sounds like something I put up my fucking plan to read list. Like, this sounds familiar. So, let's see. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I still is busy looking at uh, is like disgusting. Uh, what is it? It's a manga. Yes, he's a he's a disgusting manga. Uh, I I'm just gonna I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say that uh, um, Gunbuster is um, is quite uh, well. It's it's definitely one it's, it's definitely one of my favourite um, OVA series. Um, it's a it's a series I uh, I make sure to revisit at least once every year. Um, so. Uh, it's sort of uh, a sort of a, a small personal tradition. I've uh, I sort of watched it twice, like uh, once every year after I first watched it. Um, I think like three years ago. So yeah, yeah, it's actually um, it's really it's really fun. Um, also, um, the uh, the uh, Russian the the, the uh, Soviet girl is the uh, is the best girl. Um, I, I mean, I think it's and, like in the uh, third or second. Ep- I think it's like the second or third episode. Is, uh, actually, um, you can actually see Bush as well. Yes, yes, uh, and uh, and by Bush we mean uh, President um, Bush. Yes. And also, yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I'll be, I'm uh, actually ready now. <laughs> yes, we are. So, so the title um, of that manga, the, tenis, the girls' tennis manga, or whatever, it's aim, aim for the ace. So, yeah, that they have been pretty, um, and I guess I guess you, you can kind of see yeah, it. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm not familiar with that title. I might have been thinking of something else. Yeah, um, maybe you're thinking about Attacker Number One, the one which uh, Digiblo talked about recently. Anyway, uh, uh, no, but, I'm sorry, but I'm not a brony, so. Uh... I see. I see. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I'm not. Sure, I'm not even sure what uh, Digibro is now. But um, look, look I, ju- I just view Digibro as like a f- chaos god snitch. You know, he's continuously changing forms. Uh, yes, yeah. um, Digibro is. Yes, Digibro is. Like, like at, th- at this point, I'm convinced he's possibly a demon prince of snitch. Like basically, he's flip flopped on so much shit that snitch has decided to like ascend him to demon prince them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so yeah, that, uh, probably accurate. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I guess um, if you can kind you can kind of see that it's uh, tr- kind of based on a on a sports manga, wouldn't you say? Because like, for example, the fact that there's a coach. Um, <sighs> oh yeah, right. Co- yeah, I, I, I was I was definitely getting vibes of like. Mm. School Yuri, maybe Sojo I sp- like I was definitely getting a bit of a Sojo I Yuri thing, you know, you have the popular girl and everyone's calling her, Oh no, Sama, oh no, Sama. You know, there's the popular girl, and then there's like the Ditsy Cloud here who's unpopular, you know. 
I, I was definitely getting some ver- like obviously it's not that in the show, but I was getting some very light Yuri high school Sojo kind of feel to it. Like the the first episode definitely feels like that. Yes, I think the the, the leotards too. You know, like because you can, it's it's kind of supposed to look like a gym uniform, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Also, and also, Dark Hood like li- literally has a rival at the start that 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 actually defeats with with her special, you know, her special move. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, there. Yeah, yeah, this uh, this series um, changes tones very very um, quickly. Um, oh, well, yeah, like it goes from like school life and Osama to war to depression to romance to. Yeah, um, it's like a tra- tragic, you know, war, you know, war story. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, great, they, yeah. They, like all in six episodes. Like, um, the show itself is a bit of an, is a bit of a roller coaster, but um, it's a very yeah. fun ride. Like, like you you watch the show, and it's like, damn, that was a fun OVA. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and you and you sort of you sort of want to um forget about it, you know, just 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 to watch the whole thing again, right? Um, it's got it's got that great great quality to it. And unfortunately, there's somebody on our server who can't see that quality, and that's um, Mac Macaloid, of course. Bless him. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I think. I think. I'm. I think. I'm gonna ban him at some point if he. Uh, if he has another wrong, wrong opinion. Um, I gave everyone three chances, and uh, he's on like his last chance now. So I'm just gonna ban him. If, if oh, he's you, you, you're, so, you're so kind. I was just gonna like, like dox him, <laughs> find out where he lives, and smother him in his bed. <laughs> So, so he has uh, two complaints think, about uh, the series. I think he lives in Serbia, by the way. Just, just, just a bit of you know. As, uh, anyway, yeah. Don't sorry. worry. It makes the yeah. hunt more interesting. It so yeah. his his two complaints. His first complaint is that um, the aliens weren't convincing as a threat. <laughs> would Would you agree with that? That um, oh, the aliens yeah, yeah, didn't. I, agree. I would. I would say that, like, for the f- I-, I would say that, like, for the first couple episodes, like, they don't really come off as threatening or intimidating. Like, they more come off as like, I-, I would agree for like the first couple episodes, they don't really come off as threatening and shit. Like, they yeah. they kind of feel like background plot. It, 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 yeah, in the in the first few episodes, um, they're more of a plot device to um, establish. Um, Noriko's tragic backstory, you know, um, how her how her father has died, you know, uh, ah. in 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 the space war, right? And and it's sort of used used to, uh, well, yeah, like they they're a uh, plot device. Yeah. Um. Um. I I definitely think like maybe towards the end they do become a bit more like threatening, but I'd say like in the beginning they they feel more as more as a plot device than anything. Like they like I don't really feel the threat or urgency. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel um, for me, um, the uh, aliens um, sort so, sort of feel that um, are sort of at at, at the most dangerous when um, when uh, um, Naruko, um befriends Smith, and you know, and she sort of has like 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 a crush on um, a crush on him, and then and then he's, he's, he sort of gets killed um, out, out of nowhere, and yeah, um, after 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 Naruko sort of you know. Finds the gunbuster and uh, you know starts starts like destroying like thousands of them. Um, the um, alien threat gets gets sort of um, diminished, obviously, because because you know they then you know they they um, they they can be defeated now. And it's you know it's not it's, it's not so much yeah, of yeah, a yeah, uh, yeah, victory. Um, yeah. yeah, like a good analogy to this is like you you you. It's like Warhammer forty k. The Imperial Guard <laughs> is trying to hold off this orc horde. They they. They're about to fail. They're about the orcs about to break through, and then the fucking space marines just crash in through and kill all the orcs. Like it's like, it, it, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like the uh, cavalry charge <laughs> from uh, from a Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, we're all going to die. Wait, what's that on the hill? Charge! <laughs> like it's yeah. yeah. Oh, Gandalf uh, so, uh, turned up finally. <laughs> yeah, they, they finally turned up. Yeah. So I, I would agree with him that at least for the first half, they do serve more as a plot device. Um, ha- however, I would say that they're actually a pretty well used plot device. Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, this if we when we get around to talk about Noriko, um, we'll 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 talk about her a bit more in depth how how they add to it. But yeah, I would say that for the first half, yeah, I don't really feel the tension or fear of why we should be afraid of these fucking things. 
Yeah, it's a bit windy, it's our agent. Um, so is it, okay. Yeah. Can you stop yeah. trying to like meditate and tread on the hill? Or like, yeah. spelunky on the, on the cliffs of Dover? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'll, uh, I'll get certain, I'll get lower. Um, uh, yes, I'm sorry. This is, this is just how I, you know, how I uh, harness my chi energy or something. But, uh, I can, uh, yeah. I can. By scaling cliffs. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to, you, you got to be fit and watch anime, of course. Um, you can't have one mm. or the other. So, um, Macaloid's um, second complaint was that. Um, it got, uh, that gunbuster was uh, rushed, yet dragged out at the same time. Um, uh, it's silent panning shots uh, take up too much of screen time, I guess. Um, especially with Noriko having almost Mary Sue levels of skill development. So no, no, no. Um, it, uh, there's like there's 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 like like, like a whole training montage of it, like you know tr training of coach, you know, and she's like she's yeah, I guess. I think I think these um these problem problems do uh, sorry yeah these um problems do do um exist in a series. Um, I've I've got it like um I've been thinking why they don't really matter to me um when they would matter in different circumstances like like in Star Wars for example where like it's it's all like you know these uh these these problems turn into great big you know pustules or you know on its face whereas in Gunbuster you know this 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 isn't really but much of a problem, and it sort of adds to 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 the uh, tone, I guess, of the series because it's you know it's quite it's quite hopeful. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, these um these are problems. I guess um I've just sort of said why it, it doesn't really matter, and it's and it's to do with it's to do with tone. Um, I think um what what the series is going for is um is a bright future. Where you know everything's got right for Japan, and, you know, um, humanity has like space travel in like the twenty uh, twenties and things. So, it, so it sort of it sort of makes a lot of sense in, a, in its sort of own way that um, our protagonist would just you know would just be amazing, you know, because <laughs> you, know? you know it fits. Uh, anyway, that's so that's that's my opinion. Um, my I, um, opinion I, I, I just want to talk about like the panning things. I really think the, the silent panning shots is really to give you the audience like this idea of like how vast the universe is. Like just piggybacking off like the hopeful idea. Like I, I think like some of the panning shots is just to show like how how deep the setting is. Like the spaceships are big. You know the stuff like there's this wide open stars out in the distance. You know there's this vast galaxy universe to explore um and also about the skill progression thing i would like to add that she actually does train quite a bit and does it like like and, and here's the thing in noriko's case like, like we we actually feel that it's earned unlike say another example ray from star wars where it doesn't feel earned like with noriko you you with noriko it actually feels earned because she is putting in extra training, she is putting in time to try and catch up. Um, I, yeah, I do yeah, believe yeah. it is an issue about the the, chron the chronological the the chronology of the show is a bit is a bit fucked. But um, I I, I think yeah, for the most it, part, yeah, yeah. The um the the only really glaring thing I can I can sort of point out is um is how Naruto is sort of. Uh, Sort of becomes heads and tails above above the rest of the class so quickly. Um, in that in that one episode, yeah, that, that, that's my only issue. Like, um, yeah, I, like, like everything else, I, I I think was natural and fine. Like, you know, she goes out for a first sorte and her partner gets killed, and she gets depressed by that. But she's now more motivated to try harder and not fuck up. So, I I yeah. like I get the idea of her increasing her skills. I just think that sudden jump of like she's just better than everyone else. And such a small time, I think, is a bit if. Yeah, but like, um, f f um I forgive this. Like, uh, this, this, this is fine for me. Um, just, just, um, just because of what the series is, uh, of what of what the OVA is going for. You know, it's uh, it's tone. As I said, you know, I can I can sort of forgive it for being a little bit, you know, unrealistic. <laughs> let's say. Um. So. Uh... Biogandum, do you think that uh, the pacing is rushed yet dragged, as McAlloyd says? Nah. Um, I think the pacing's fine. 
like the only issue I have really is just like the chronolo like the the chronological timeline of events because we 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 are kind of thrown from one situation to the other at, at some points in the show, but I think pacing wise it's fine. Like yeah, and um, I also I also think it's kind of slow at the beginning or uh, at least um, at least slower. It's still it's still lightning fast. You know? um, you know, uh, as we um, as we're talking about, you know, uh, just in the first episode, Noriko goes from being, you know, um, awful in in her like mech to you know to being like the best in her class, and you know, and now, and now she can sort of go out into space with uh, Onisama. You know, uh, um, you know, this it's still um, the pace is never slow. Um, it's just sort of, it just speeds up later on. You know, um, but um, I think I think it is slower at the start. Just um, just so. Um, things like um, how the science works and the uh, me- and the um, and the um, mechanics of space works um, in a show could be established properly, um, you know, rather than just being overwhelmed by uh, a bunch of just information you know, babble all at once. It's sort of, it, yeah, it sort of slows down a little bit, which is which is nice. You know, you can sort of take it in a bit a bit uh, easier. Let me see. Um, Biogandam, do you think that uh, Noriko is uh, Mary Sue? Hmm. I'm going to say no. Why and not? The reason why I say that is partially the tone, but also it the, the show does showcase her having character flaws and her having to suffer the consequences for said character flaws. Yes. Like yeah. to be Mary Sue, she has to be one hundred percent perfect, one hundred percent justified all the time. And she she really isn't for the show. Like the show itself is a character journey for Nor- for Noriko. Like, you know, she she starts out trying to be this mech pilot because, you know, she wants to be daddy's little girl, right? She tries that, realizes that she sucks, and she has to train really hard, put in a lot of extra effort to do it. And Here's the thing, her her aptitude to get up to the level where she can get up the space was at, like, aside from her becoming the top of her class, like, her, like sorry, let me rephrase that, like, her, tr- like, her putting in the extra training, and, like, she is, like, she is giving it her heart and soul for that training, and it actually does pay off, so that's one example. The The second example is when she first goes off the battle and she's freaking the fuck out, she's panicking, and, you know, she gets her, her teammate killed, her partner killed, um, that's definitely not like a Mary Sue train. Here's the thing: the show doesn't treat it as a good thing as well. Like the show doesn't go like it's like, oh, sorry, Ray, that you know Stormtrooper number twenty five died, but you'll you'll get him next time. Like, no, it's it's viewed as a shocking thing. And she also does get yelled at and actually threatened to like go to the. And, and there's also another thing. Um, there's a situation I think it's in the second episode where she breaks orders because they find out. Um, they find her father's ship, the spaceship, and she goes in there. And basically, she breaks orders, and they threaten her. They don't. They don't, they don't reward her. They they actually punish her by telling um they they give her quite a fair scolding, and say if you break orders again, you'll be thrown into the brig, or they'll actually punish you. So, I would disagree that she's a Mary Sue because she actually does get punished, and her actions does have consequences, and not everything she does is viewed in a positive light. I yeah, see. yeah, exactly. I would, um, I would agree with, with what you said. Um, yeah, just, um, just something we we haven't, we haven't pointed out yet is the um, music. You know, which, <laughs> you know, I think um, even even uh, a um, detractor like like um, like a um, Macaloid will uh, has um, admitted that 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 the music is you know is amazing. You know, uh, you know, um, as you uh, you know, um, even you know, even. Uh, at, at the very beginning, where um, when you sort of get get a bit of, a bit of a bit of a flashback to where Noriko's past, you know, there's there there's this sort of beautiful um, piano um, um, playing, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it really, um, you, you know, and uh, and when the um, Exilion um, sort sort of comes on screen, it's you know, that's a, that's a very you know very um, inspiring, you know, and it's all you know, it's 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 all, it, it's all gets you uh, you know um, prepared for battle, you know. Uh, it, yeah. So um, yeah. The um, I think I think a lot a lot a lot of why this um series is so um, impactful um on a on a sort of a, a emotional level, 
is because of the um, amazing um, amazing music that's that sort of um, played all the way through it um, as well. And it, you know, it really it, re- it really adds to the uh, it re- it really complements the um, emo- emotional parts too, right? Yeah. So, short uh, agent, do you think that the re- uh, the relationship between Noriko and Onesama, or whatever the fuck her name was, um, that, that it was uh, d- done developed properly? Do you think that there was any development, uh, or or was it just um, Yuri bit? Um, I th- I thought it was fine. Um, you sort of um, you sort you sort you sort you sort of um, you sort of co- um, come into the series um halfway through. So so, so obviously Noriko has uh, already met and got and got to know um Arisama. You know, the um the uh, blue head girl um just just to just to uh, elucidate things. Um, I thought you know I, I thought it was fine. You know um it it was um estab- established quite um clearly that uh, Noriko looks up to uh. This of this um older um her sort of uh, older um peer um I think or uh, I don't know what 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 would you call it her uh... senpai <laughs> yeah yeah but, um, but, uh, 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 yeah, I, I, I know the, the, uh, for those who don't know Anisama means big sister in Japanese well one of the it's it's one of the words that means uh, big sister uh, in yeah, Japanese yeah her um her her uh, role model though. Like, yeah. Um. Yeah. There we go. Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Sort of. Um. Sort of later on. Where. Um. Where. where um. When I have like a bit. A bit of a falling out. Um. You know. It was fine. You know. Um. I couldn't. You know. There was. There wasn't anything wrong with it. Um. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, amazing. Um. Or anything. But. Uh, you know. Um. The. The relationship made sense. You know. And. Uh, in the end. Um. You um could could definitely believe that that they became close friends and that and, and that they were actually willing to uh, make that sacrifice together. You know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, what's better than making a sacrifice with your bro? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I suggested to McAloy that maybe the reason why um he felt that it was rushed and dragged. Was because um, there were some some time skips. Um, I guess if if would it, do you think do you guys think that um, the story would be better if it was longer and there and the time skips were not there? Baugandam. Um, I, I I definitely do like I think the time skips do come in a bit too fast. Like they do kind of hit you uh, a bit, but um, I think it's fine. Like I think, like, like cause when I watch the show, it does like it does feel more like I I don't really it's what this is one of those shows where I don't think it needs any more episodes. Like I think it's just fine with what it has. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it works. Um, it it works perfectly. You know, perfectly fine. Um, if you were if you were to add like an extra episode, um, somewhere in there, um, you know, well. Or maybe if you if if you sort of doubled its length to you know to, to like twelve episodes, um, I it's got it's kind of hard to say if if it would be any better or any worse. Um, I think I think the series would be a lot a lot less um, famous, <laughs> you know, uh, quote unquote, um, uh, because you know um, the uh, you know one one of the main reasons why the series is is uh, so well um, so well. Um, so well um, remembered is um, is because of how you know its formats. You know, um, you uh, you um, you get six OVA episodes. You know, for yeah. um, for for the price of twenty four, basically. Um, you know, so um, which you know, which means every episode is um, is um, really well animated. Um, you know, um, the uh, story is um, is quick, and uh, you know it get. It gets to jump in very, very, very fast. It, it doesn't really uh, dwell um, to, um, for too long on, you know, on anything. And there is, you know, and as a result of its of its length, um, it's it's some it's somewhat um, unnatural length. Um, it sort of it sort of um, changes the you know changes the storytelling. Um, which um, you know just um, just as a side note, this um, 
this um, series, you know, um, w- you know, watching this series and understanding its, uh, you know, the uh, process of how it was, you know, roughly the process of how of how it, of how it was made, um, you know, um, it makes me think that uh, that that this may have, you know, have had um, quite a um, profound um, effect on uh, Anno's um, directing style later on. Um, you know, with you know, with with his uh, fast fast cuts he makes and stuff. I wonder, you know, I wonder how much of that he sort he sort of learnt from from um, you know, directing Gunbuster. Yes, I mean, uh, this was Anno's uh, first anime, and as far as uh, first animes go, it's it's not a bad one. Uh, like, like honestly, like for for a show, like. I mean, this show is not bad. Like, I, I I'm not, I don't oh, no. think super as highly as of it as Ford Agent, but like, I enjoy the show. Like, I'll watch it every now and then. I'm sorry, but there's this other show I prefer. But um, um yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Um, it's just you know, for a first director, for doing like for a first time, this is still quite good. Um, I, and also another thing I just want to mention is that like, uh, speaking about the animation, is that you could actually, when watching the show. The show does feel like it has a soul to it. Like you feel the people who made this actually gave a fuck and enjoyed every second of this. Oh yeah, 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 def- yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I've heard that um, when they show the Etzelian get blown up or something, um, like so- some of the uh, the people that they show that were on the ship were actually like. Uh, the people in charge, like the faces, like um, how, how do we explain it? Uh, they they just drew in, drew in uh, the faces of their um, superiors, just as a, a reference. Um, and um, because a lot of um, artists, like a lot of anime artists back in the day, that's with they they would reference shit, like um, like um, a lot of like old school manga artists and uh, quite a few manga artists, they like some of the really good ones. Most of them were hentai artists. And uh, most of them uh, yeah. are uh, well. Let's just say they're they're drawing references from stuff. <laughs> and trust me, buddy, it's not porn. They're drawing references from. Trust me. Yeah. Um. By the uh, way, uh, despite yeah, the f- you can you you um can really tell sometimes, Cardi. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. L- listen. Shout out to my girl Yuki and Dash. I see. I see. What? So what? What's up with um? Yuki and Dash. Let me just go grab her works. Um, <laughs> Yuki and D- she's one of my favorite like female hentai artists. Oh, I see. <laughs> she, I see. She's also done a few mainstream publications, but uh, she's very inter- She's um, we interesting thing about a lot of hentai female manga kids is that like they're super hot. Not like, quite oh, to like, this. like um, IRL or uh... <laughs> in real life, they are fucking hot. It's the wit. Like you got this one chick who draws like super hot, like milf hentai and shit, and she's like a milf herself. Like, ironically, she looks like something from a hentai manga. It's fucking wild. Yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah, that makes some sort of um, weird logical sense. Like, right? Yeah, like a lot of these people, like 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 a lot of these animes. Um, and, and this also goes to the character designs as well. Like, like for for Noroko, like she looks like an actual Japanese person I could run into. Like, like taken to real life, like I expect her to be like similar to that, except with maybe a bit more rounder face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe and, and um, maybe maybe smaller eyes. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I think I feel like yeah, um, smaller if, eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It will be it will be a bit scary if. Uh... Speaking of hey, the uh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I th- I thought I thought that I thought that um, Noriko and, and the girls in ge- in general looked like a lot more cuter than. Um, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah than, I can see that. Like, definitely uh, Noriko, yeah. like yeah. she has kind of like this innocence um to her, like this. So, no, yeah, there there is kind of like an innocence to her character design. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, right. I just don't find m- most uh, anime characters, which uh, more than anime, which are supposed to be cute, that cute. I, I would say. I, 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 you know, I think in their case, I think it's because they're just trying too hard. Like for this show, like for this show, like when they designed her character, it kind of like it's kind of like a natural cuteness. Like it's, 
Actually, I've got, I got a way to describe Let me just go grab a couple, look yeah, at a picture yeah. or two. It's interesting because, um, yeah, I think I think there's there's um, a reason why um, people um, sort of um, will use like a lane, you know, um, as their as their PFP over over you know a higher budget option, you know. Um, yeah, it might it might be to do with with, with the process. Um, that's what, that's what it sort of seems like to me. Because um, I guess you know I I guess with um with um. This sort of animation style, this sort of animation style you get in Gunbuster, the the artist really 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 has to think about how this character would look like in in three dimensions, um, and so as as a result, they'll 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 sort of look a bit a bit more convincing, um, you know, which you know which which is different from uh, how things are animated these days. Um, yeah, like especially since most of the stuff was hand drawn in like cell animation, like. So, so yeah. to give you an idea, so th this is a couple of like pitches. Mostly, these chicks are like slurries. One of them's a wrestler. Two of them like bass players. But look, look, like if you look at the top <laughs> one, look at the top one or the or the bottom one. Like there's sort of like a naturality of how they come off as cute. Um, yeah, yeah, um, I see that. Yeah, like like the, I, I think it may be called like Gap Moe, or I, I, there's books about this that that talks about this, like the Moe Manifesto, um, like. <laughs> The the way the thing about Noriko's design is that yes, she's cute, you know, because she does have like the bigger eyes, that, you know, that help portray innocence. But I think there's like a naturalness to the cuteness, like that. Like I'm thinking like a girls next door kind of vibe. Um. It, yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Though uh, I don't know. I think. I think if you uh, if you see if you've seen the the uh, girl, the uh, girls next door to me, uh, Laura looks uh, <laughs> looks looks like some goddess, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I, I'm trying to like I, I don't know there's I don't have the words to describe it, but it's kind of like that. Like she kind of has this natural girls next door kind of cuteness. Like it comes off as natural. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, it's like she she hasn't been like like um purposely drawn, you know, to be you know super attractive or something you know she's just been she's just been drawn around to sort of character traits um but that's what it seems like anyway you know if you see like on, yeah. you know her nay summer like her her, her nay summer has that like um regal kind of look to her like like even when yeah. the like yeah like that's the interesting thing with the character designs is that like they kind of reflect the the character's personalities and they kind of come off as a bit more realistic like if you look at like her in Asama, she's got very sharp features. Like she's got very, um, very intense, very intense eyes. Like, like she's staring into your soul. Like, uh, like yeah, you, yeah. You, if you meet some of the people who have like those eyes, like she has those piercing eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That, that, she has like the um, her lips. Like she has the more like pronounced lips as well. Speaking of um, um, yeah, true. speaking of character traits, um, Toad Asia, what did you think of uh, Noriko's um, use and concept of uh, brassiers or brass or whatever you want to call them? Uh, no comments. <laughs> what about you, Baraganda? Did you oh, notice? Sorry, that? I was just. I'm sorry, I was just distracted. I'm like looking through in hentai right now. I see. I, uh, quite appropriate, I would say. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really uh, in the company of some of 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 some coached individuals here. Yeah. I, hey, hey, look, look. I know what I am. Like, there's no saving me. So, it's too late. Run, save yourself. But um, yeah, jokes aside, I, I don't really have much to come comment on on that particular regard. Yeah, I think um. I well, I, I've heard that it was a, a big deal back then because it was something new. Um, how would you describe it, Toad Agent? Um, I'll talk. I'll talk a bit, a bit, like, a bit about the, about the process, right? There was um, there was, there was this this um, new technique developed um, by um, Guy Lux's head scientist, and that um, and that technique was called um, the uh, Guy Lux bounce, um, where you um, animate separately. Um, certain assets of certain characters um separately from it's, from the rest of their body yeah. and uh, and that, and, that, and that gives you quite quite a um, 
realistic looking uh, Gynax mm. bounce. Yes, a boob, a boob basic, so whatever they are called. Mm. Anyway, um, let's see. So no, now, now that we have got the culture and stuff out of the way, uh, oh, th- there's another cultured thing which happened at the end, um, which was well, Noriko um, tearing tearing off um, her vest or whatever you want to call call it. Uh, um, did you like? Did that take you out of the moment, or did you feel like it added anything? Um, I don't um, know. Kind of, kind of, kind of neutral, really. <laughs> kind of neutral as well. Mm, I see, but because I've I've kind of seen some um, galaxy brain takes about how like oh it shows you like um, <laughs> how passionate she is or something. Um, yeah, look, 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 no. look, I, look, look. I'm just neutral because clearly my my brain isn't. Um, you know, I, I haven't reached galaxy brain levels yet. I'm sorry. All right. Like, I'm, look, I, I, I didn't go to Oxford University or, or, you know, and have like 20 PhDs in gender studies. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't think I, I the don't... Uh, people call, you know, call it um, saying that about, about that particular scene have gone to Oxford either. Um, I think yeah. m- most likely that's, that's just like incorrect. <laughs> and you might just be reading uh, too much into it. Yeah. Uh, Yes, it's it's bas- basically the kind of people who talk about uh, symbolism, flower symbolism in anime or whatever. Ah. Uh. Um. Yeah, b- basically they they can't accept that um they're liking it for that reason, so they need to come up with uh, some reason about why it's so sophisticated. Or something. Yeah. Well. Um. Look. 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 I, I. I get like trying to like analyze your media and shit like that, but dude, you don't need to be thinking critically of every single fucking scene. Like, some people just throw shit in because it looks cool. You know, she's going to tear off her jacket, you know, make it look cool. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's like, yeah, I guess, um, I guess I would say that, that it, does, it does make that scene more, 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 more dramatic, right? <laughs> you know? Uh, but that's about yeah, that, you know, it's like an action it, really. movie. Yeah. You know, the, the main guy, the main hero is going to fight the bad guy and he, like, takes off his fucking leather jacket and he's, like, cracking his knuckles. Yeah, you know, it's like it's game time. It's, it's mm. certainly in character. Uh, let's say, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say, let's say that. <laughs> so, have you guys seen the Gunbuster Science Lessons? Yeah, I watched the I watched the um, the first time I saw I saw this series um, a few years ago, um, but I've sort 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 of forgotten. Um, what what they said, but uh, I do um I do know that that, that, uh, that they were just there to to um, explain um the te- technology and the uh, rules and stuff. But uh, they're um they're not really um they're not really necessary. They're just sort of like like a bit of a, a bonus. Um, if if you want yeah, to see they, them, yeah, they, they kind of come off as like you know, for an example, like a Warhammer lore book of like, oh, you know, this is one Inferno pistol and you know this is what a chain sword or you know they kind of it kind of comes off as like you know a law book for like an rpg it's like oh you know we've given you the basic shit but here's like a a big thick law book that explains what the shit is it's like you know this is what um delta robot st- is you know that type of shit um i i, I didn't watch yeah, it the uh, the uh, sizzler I, I think it was uh in this case yeah Yes, it's um, basically made up science. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, it's made up science shit, you know. Like it's interesting, but you know, it's not. It's not necessary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's um, literally just them telling the audience that they did actually put try and put thought into this. Like you know, you know, this guy found out about BT cells, and BT cells allows them to do this. You can convert it to a nuclear, tie it up to a nuclear reactor, which gives you the ability to make giant robots. You know, mm. take no b- bullshit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, and uh, but but I still like it. Uh, I think it uh, it was kind of cute. Um, yeah, it helps add a bit of depth to the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you could tell the voice actors, but you know, we're having some fun with it. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Like on on another note, like there is quite a few shows that get like a bunch of like afterwards with the voice actors just doing random shit. Like Digimon Tamers has a few of that shit. Where they like 
recorded shit released on like i think t- cds for you to listen to and it's just the it's just them and the character like them acting as the characters and, and 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 just fucking around so you know there is that aspect too yeah it's it's kind of like yeah. um yeah. it's when you want like a a little bit extra i guess um so yeah we spoke spencer having you know have having that mental breakdown at the end of evil was was uh, quite funny so. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> You, you guys have seen it, right? The the, the one where like he, he's asking me how to get the bus. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Did you guys think it made any sense why Coach chose Noriko? No. Uh, to no. What about you, Bagger? I guess the uh, um, what I would say um, is it could it could be uh, because of his lo- loyalty to uh, Noriko's father, um, basically. Yeah, that, that basically I was about to say the same thing. Like it was basically nepotism. I see. Like, um, yeah. The point that, that they point that out, but yeah, basically because um, Noriko is the admiral's. Daughter, daughter, the admiral who, who died, the admiral who died in. in I, I mean, there's also yeah. there is another practical reason to use her as well. It could be used as a symbol of hope as well. You know, like we lost this really great admiral, but his daughter or or child is here to take up the reins and kick ass. So they could also they could also use it for that as well as like a moral booster thing. You know, it's like you know you lose your great general, but then their son comes son comes around. I'm, the, is this like, um, the son comes around, it's like, oh, he's going to be good, and it turns out that he's just as good as his old man. You know, I, I, I think it's for that reason too, is like a morale booster. But yeah, I think it's just mostly nepotism. Yes, I, I, yes, it's also I think um, nepotism because it's like nepotism got her chosen, but her training got it let got her to stay. Yes, I, I also think uh, maybe it's because um, the uh, coach liked. Um, basically respected the admiral, so um, maybe he thought that there must be some of that uh, in his daughter as well. I don't know. So, but it's, yeah, it's still. I mean, uh, it is rare. It is rare, but you'll you'll have like like you will have like female citizen from generals who actually aren't that half bad at combat or military tactics or strategy. So, h- however. Such people are incredibly rare. Why I mean rare, you can count them on your hands. If, if you have watched, uh, if you have watched uh, demos, uh, demolition, these, um, I think, or douchebag chocolate or whatever his name is, uh, yeah. a review. If not, uh, of course. Yes, and uh, in his review, he, jo- he jokes that, uh, but it's probably because the coach is suffering from brain cancer or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, in his defense, like, cancer will fuck with you on multiple levels, so, but, um... Yeah, yes, um, uh, th- the first time you watched uh, Gunbuster, did you no- did you notice, uh, be- be- because I-, I didn't notice this until, um, I think, until I saw uh, his review, oh, I- or at least, I-, I can't remember, somebody pointed it out to me. But I didn't. I didn't notice that it was weird that um, they were like doing fucking gym, gymnastics uh, in 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 the max in order to train. <laughs> yeah, like in the first episode, like they were doing fucking jogging. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I just, I just found it. I just found that stuff funny. Like, uh, I think. Well, um, this. You know, this I, I, I think it's funny with the episodes. Like, you, you know, it comes off as like fucking college for Transformers. You know. Like it literally yeah. fits the episode. You you got the school light like Yuri, and and then it's like boot camp for Transformers. Like it's literally like like it's 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 very um interesting, to say the least. Yeah, I, I kind of lost it when um she was running and doing those like uh, how do you know what do you call them? Um, yeah, um, yeah. She was she was sort of um, pulling the weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with her robot, as if you know. Her robot is, you know, is is going to gain, you know, any any more strength. You know? Um, what do you call it uh, when you like uh, pun- uh, basically punch into the air? Um, like um yeah. when you tri- <laughs> Sorry. Fuck, I'm I'm blanking on the name. But you know what I mean, like 
basically like uh, it, like something you you can you would kind of see um when watching rocky or something you know um <laughs> I, I i know the name like i'm just blanking on it like i've heard of it but i'm blanking yeah um so yeah the derso is listening but i don't think uh, he has watched uh, he has watched gun buster but um, if he wants to add anything or ask anything um, he's free to do so hello derso um well un- unless he's not listening um let's see what okay now yeah, he's listening that, yeah that's a pretty deep voice you've got there really? um maybe uh so would yes, you guys <laughs> yes so uh, would you guys say uh, would you put gunbuster in your top 10 anime <sighs> And yeah, no, I'm probably... using the second anime, so no. Yeah, um, probably not. Episode. I see. I see. Um, I guess it'll be it'll be sort of it'll be you know it'll be higher, but um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be top ten. So I got. Yeah, I have like I, I I would put this in like my top maybe one hundred. Like as far as like as far as like OVAs goes, this is probably one of the better ones, but it's definitely not top ten. I see. I I would put it in my top ten. But anyway, um, speaking of the length of the episode, so g- given this that uh, this is an OVA, I it, I think it it doesn't need to fit into the into the TV TV slot. Um, yeah, time. That's actually one of the things I do like actually about OVAs is they can kind of do their own episode lengths and shit, and they're not like constrained by some of the uh, limitations that are. Because, because obviously in Japan with TV anime, you can get away with some things depending on like the time slot and the studio and the the TV station you're airing on. But with like OVAs, you have like less of those limitations. Like for example, and 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 good student and four age will notice. You know, like Nightwalker. You know, couple of the first episodes of that show were like an OVA, and um, mm. you know they they did some shit that you probably wouldn't be able to get away on television, especially not nowadays. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the episode length is around uh, twenty five minutes. Or, or I think there was one episode which was uh, twenty seven minutes. The last one, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah. given the... in a, in a in a glo- um, in a glorious black and white. Yes, G- given that this is um, Hideaki Anno's uh, first anime, do you see any? Uh, any connection or similar things with um, Evangelion? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you go. What? I was going to say, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the um, obvious one is obviously the um, the uh, fact that uh, Noriko and, and uh, Shinji are very similar characters. Um, it's you know. It's joked how you know how uh, you know uh, Noriko you know must must have taken uh, hormone replacement pills you know and uh, tended to, tended to Shinji for uh, Evangelion and yeah um, I guess um, I guess as I as I, as I said earlier um, the uh, pacing is um, is quite similar uh, you know obviously the uh, giant robots you know as well and the uh, I mean, I, I like, and, like the Gunbuster robot, like the way it's designed and shit, and like mm. look, a couple of like aspects about like some of the bit more of the organic shit about it. Um, I'm definitely yeah. seeing in some way like a proto having a Ava Galleon form, like you know, if we mix the organic with the mechanical, you know, I am see- like I-, I I'm seeing roughly that, and also like the color scheme and shit. Like yeah, yeah. you can kind of see it. Like, um, I mean, I could see this being as like a rough, like trying out new concepts. Like, it, 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 yeah, yeah, because um, the the uh, gunbuster machine, like, li- you know, li- um, literally had its own uh, heart, you know, and it's uh, and sort and sort of these sort of uh, pseudo um, mechanical organs as well. And... Yes, yes, I can't, I can't remember. Uh, they show like a shot of uh, the robot, one of the robots without uh, the 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 plate on its head and its cables, but it sort of resembles a brain. And of course, the gunbuster has a skeleton as mm-hmm. well. Um, 
Yeah, like 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 design wise, I would say the Gunbusters is very different to the um to the Evangelions. I would say like the yeah, idea yeah. is very similar. Like this like this merging of like organic with the mechanical. Like it like you could especially see that in the Gunbuster. Like the picture I just like like look of it. It looks like it's got a fucking rib cage and like mm. heart and shit like that. And and then when you look at like the Avas like it's almost like a step beyond that. Like on the outside, you think it's a robot, but it's actually like a pilot. Like it's a like aren't the Avers like fucking lobotomized angels being piloted by like the soul, like dead family members or some fucking grim shit like that? It, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, there are uh, um, Ava Ava Unit Zero and Ava Unit um, Two are both clones of uh, Lilith, um, and uh, Ava. Every unit one is sort of the uh, bottom half, of, um, the uh, bottom half of, of um, Adam that was sort of regrown. <laughs> so uh, yes, so it, this... it's being fueled by Oscar's mother. Get on the robot for the motherland. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yes. Um, controlled by by the uh, souls of their dead mothers. <laughs> yes, so um... uh, actually. I mean, we never see Nuriko's mother, so maybe she could actually be an Ava pilot. <laughs> yeah, is it uh, possible, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I would rather not, but uh, we didn't see her, her mother. That's a good point. Um, so this which anime, I it, which I think is kind of, which is kind of odd because she met, like she she mentions her father, but never mentions her mother. Like she's always talking about how, like, oh, papa, papa. You know, she's a bit of a daddy's girl. Yeah. Never mentions the mother though, and I'm like, where the fuck's the mother in all this? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe she just sort of died at birth or something, you know. So, or maybe it's Shinji's mother. Uh, so, uh, yeah. this anime came out. <laughs> like, like Be- Begin was upset because, like, he got cut by a space general. So yeah, I, I, I guess, um, I guess she, um, Noriko went through the anime to trans pipeline. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, yeah, and then she turned into Shinji. <laughs> Yes. About uh, 20 years later or something. Uh, or, or, or was it like 10 years later? I guess... Well, at least she seems to have had a better dad than Shinji. So... Yeah. I mean, her dad was a war hero. Gendo, Gendo was a genocidal maniac. Well, in a... You know, in a sense, Gendo is, is kind, you know, kind of, kind, of, kind of a war hero, isn't he? You know? I think. Uh, um, I'm sorry, my mistake. Uh, I missed some word. He's a genocidal romantic, is what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, so. dude's gonna blow up his blo- dude's gonna blow up the universe for his wife. Was the pussy like? Was the pussy seriously that good? He's gonna blow up the again. entire universe for true love. Like, was it that? Was it well, that well, good? Uh, well, you know, um, you know, um, for Yusuke, is you know, he's still sort of um, obsessed with her, like you know, twenty years on. So you know. It, you know, there, there, must, there must have been something pretty good there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. For you, it's the Kanisior. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he does have like a, he does, for he does kind of have a Patrician Kanisio kind of look about him. So, yeah, yeah. Um, th- this anime came out uh, in 1988 um, to. Na- uh, 1989, back yeah, when I would, I, would, I would say that for the time, you know, when it came out, it looks gorgeous. Like it's very well mm. animated. Good attention to detail. Um, like for the like, because usually I I try and judge anime when when it comes to animation, I try and judge them by the standards of when they came out as well as a metric. And compared to most things that are coming out during this time, like um during this time, Gunbusters actually pretty good. And this is considering that Japan, I think, no, I think. Yeah, I think the economy crashed in like the '90s, so this was just a bit yeah. before the economic crash. Was it during yeah. it? No, it was. Uh, right before. No, yeah, yeah, just before. Um... Yeah, so this was. Yeah, so this was just before the um the economic crash. But um, like, <laughs> um, getting to like the economic shit, like like back in the '70s and '80s, like the Japanese economy was fucking crazy like like people were just like throwing money at shit it was amazing but um enough of that about that tangent but like the, the show looks fucking beautiful it even looks beautiful today like i got a blu-ray copy of it and it, it looks amazing um can you think of any other anime that came out around the same time so that we can compare i guess the co- animation i guess 
the anime which came oh, out. When did uh, when did a uh, um Royal Space Force come out? Uh, or was or, or was it in 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 the nineties? Um, I can't quite remember. Uh, okay, let me havoc. just consult my list because it's been a while. Because um, these are f- there's one or two I can think of. Let, um, if we're just going by shit by the eighties, actually, well, you know, um, uh, they were. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, there would obviously um, be um, a few uh, um, a few uh, Ghibli films, right? But 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 that might be cheating. No, I'm not doing that. That's gay. Oh, <laughs> I've got a great example. Um, the Cross movie. Do you remember Love? Um, came out nineteen eighty four. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good looking that, one. Yeah, that was alright looking. Yeah. Um, special on Blu Ray. Like that's a good example. Like this is um, what else is another fucking example I can think of? Um, Macross Plus looks pretty great, but that was made like late nineties. Um, a, a, a Royal Space, uh, the Wing of uh, Onesium or whatever. Uh, which was yeah. made by Proto Gainets, the people at Gainets before Gainets formed. That came out um, in oh, in nineteen eighty seven. I see. Yeah. So like um, the year before. Yeah. Obviously, um, I know, I know. Um, animated a lot of those scenes in that film itself, uh, which which is which is why uh, that film looks looks so good um, in part. Um, yeah, and you know. Uh, um, I'm not quite sure, like um, um, Royal Space Force, you know, just by looks, you know, um, is really amazingly animated, and the uh, character designs are like are quite similar to uh, Gunbuster. Uh, I so. would say it looks. I think I would say it might look better than Gunbuster. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I I think that's that's also in part because because it's it's a uh, film, so so you know, even even more uh, resources can, can sort of be put into. Uh, Every you know, every cut, um, right? Yeah, yeah because some... like for a, for a TV show, they kind of have to spread out the budget all across the episodes. I mean, that's why they do like less episodes nowadays because it's not just it's not because they're la- it's it's not just because laziness, but it's also because they want to try like in theory they want to put as much money as they can into each episode and try and like budget it yeah. out. Yeah, 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 for uh, consistency, sake. <laughs> I, I don't care about the pretty colors, so I don't I can't say that I really felt uh, like it was it looked know, bad. Sadly, anything, most but... sucker fags do, and uh, you know yeah. they're a loud minority. So, but but to be fair, I've seen some uh, clips from uh, Gunbuster in Sakuga fag um, compilations, which they make because that's all they do. They clip yeah. stuff and uh, post it. Uh, so if it looks good enough for them, I think it will look it. It looks good enough for most people, I would say. Um, maybe th- there were some places where, like, I could kind of see, like, um, that some of the if effects, like when it comes to the mechs, like uh, I, I, I can almost see that um, it's a, it's the the background of space, and they're kind of moving moving a picture by hand acro- across the screen of. of of the robot, yeah, that kind of that kind of adds to it. There, yeah, you can, you can. I, um, it's done well though, but uh, you know, it's sort of it's quite um it's quite um fascinating to 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 sort sort of get get a glance at at the process and um, sometimes. Uh, going back to the uh, Eva tangent, um, I kind of felt like. So this came out uh, in the 1980s when the Japanese economy was great, and uh, it's oh um, dude, it was like gangbusters. Like literally, ec- um, economic experts were saying like Japan was going to become like an economic superpower, and then like everything just crashed and burned for multiple reasons. But like, like yeah, the economy like. But basically, the economy in Japan was fucking booming like gangbusters. It was wild. Whereas when Eva came out, uh, the economy in Japan was fucked, and uh, Anna was depressed that um, basically he couldn't, yeah, yeah. he couldn't get money to make yeah. anime the, the way that he wanted to. Like I think, it, 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 yeah, um, a lot of a lot of the reason why he was so depressed was be- um, was because the uh, sequel to uh, Rogue Space Force was sort of um, canned, so so he was sort of um, hung out. 
Yes, I, I, I also remember that uh, Nadia, um, b- basically they had to make more episodes because they were forced to, and it turned turn into a shit show. Mm. And they, they, they kind of ran out of money as well. Um, so he was, yeah, basically uh, annoyed. I, I guess his hope uh, was gone. Um, and um, you can kind of see, so, so the, the, there's sort of kind of a, um, an underlying uh, nationalism in in Gunbuster. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. There's, um, there's sort of a um, underlying nationalism in in like most of his stuff. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, like, um, it, because it, it, if you didn't know, um, the setting in Gunbuster is in an alternative universe where um, Japan won the uh, won the Second World War, and uh, it was uh, America which attacked. Um, Hawaii, <laughs> which belonged, which actually belonged to Japan, yeah. um, in a, it was uh, the Americans which uh, made a sneak attack on on Jap- on Hawaii, which belonged to the Japanese. And mm. yes, exactly <laughs> how it went. <laughs> yep, um, I can see the historical re- re- revisionism. Yes, and uh, of course, um, and basically in the future, everybody talks Jap- Japanese. Um, if you look at it, that cancer anime die bust, I think no, uh, but yeah, but basically, uh, it's it's a world where Japan is number one, and uh, I, I guess maybe maybe because because of the out of control economic growth and uh, the idea. Well, that it's also just... it is pop- also it's probably because of the timeline that Arno grew up in. Because uh, if I remember correctly, with Arno, he would have grown up. Just before or around the otaku boom, when the otaku was starting to become like an actual subculture, so he would have been, he wouldn't have been the generation. He would have been not the post-war generation, but he would have been like the generation after that, as well. So you know, he he grew like um, yes, uh, like if you look, yeah, if you look at some of the the grandfathers of like modern anime, like a lot of these dudes who are the grandfathers of modern anime and manga, a lot of them were part of they either participated in world war ii or were part of like the next generation like arno was kind of like part of that chain and the link so um yeah. when was arno born let me check he d yeah he arno because i think he, he's not yeah, yeah. Super... he would um he would be a uh, boomer though right or uh or Gen X. Uh, yeah he was born yeah he was born in 1960 so he would have been yeah, he would. So he wouldn't have been the post-war Japan. He wouldn't no, have been no, like not... post-war Japan, but he grew up. Yeah, like he would be the generation that's the after that shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he would have. Yeah, yeah, he would have. Um, he would. He would have been a boomer then. Um, <laughs> in our current thing. So it, it, basically, people were kind. There's a lot of books. Um, um, from that era of, um, like... Okay, I, I can dive into a little bit about this. So, um, if you, like, so Japan going into World War Two, you do have this nation that there's a lot of, like, national, like, pride and shit like that, because they just gotten off, a couple of decades before, they just gotten off the Shinzo-Russian War, um, they, uh, they participated lightly in World War One, and they're absolutely crushing the, the Chinese and Manchurian Korea. Like, they're yeah. just fucking booming it. And then yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. have them completely fucking crushed and invaded. Which, by the way, um, the Japanese have not been successfully invaded since the actual of like the modern Japanese people. Because um, the the modern day Japanese people are actually descended from two groups of um, but it, it's complex. But there's like the Jomon, and then there's like the something other people, and then like like intermixed yeah, to make like the. Yeah, that yeah, they basically intermix to make the Japanese people. So basically, when the Japanese and they're not just being invaded, they're being occupied, and they also got like nuked twice with atomic bombs. And so, like after World War Two, the, the there is, like the sense of loss, and they they have to fucking define themselves because Japan has kind of always been in its own little fucking bubble, be, because of ge- like because of geography and where the fuck it is. It's always been in its own little bubble. And now they've been conquered and occupied, and and now they have the you know they're so pro you know they had all this national pride and it's like 
fuck, we have nothing. And so they, yeah, they kind yeah. of have to America, redefine themselves. America were uh, using hacks, that's why. It was, yeah. it was yeah. bullshit. Using hacks. But ba so basically, they have to redefine themselves and they have to sort of rebuild themselves from the bottom up, from the from from scratch. And it, 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 if you actually read into Japanese history, they've actually done this several times. Like, I know there's like the meme that like Japan never changes and yada, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But it actually isn't true. Like, like they'll go through like these yeah, massive okay. major shifts and then it, like the, the whole paradigm will shift again. Like, for example, a lot of things that are quote unquote traditional are from like the Edo period or something like that. Like a lot of the things they keep that are quote unquote traditional. A lot of that shit was started in the Edo period, which was like 400 years ago. And before then, shit was definitely different back then. And before then was definitely different. So, you know, they, 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 they rebuild themselves from the ground up. And then you start getting these things called... And this is where you start getting the, the prototype otaku. And this sort of starts out with, like, train manias. Like, trains was a popular thing. Like, mm. for them. Yeah. And these imagine, are when, uh, like, the... Uh, yeah, I imagine, I imagine you would have um, you got a lot of um, war um, otaku quite, quite early on as well. Yeah, so, uh, so you get all these people. You get all these people who are, like... Because um, these are the prototype otaku, all right? And then you get, like, anime, because, like, the dude who made Astro Boy and some of those modern, like, the, the grandfathers of modern mangaka, they were not otaku. They were, I guess you could say they're part of, like, the proto-otaku, or, like, kind of, like, starting it. Yeah, so you know? it, 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 yeah the uh, the um, people who, who, who decided to uh, take inspiration from Disney. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, essentially. Also, Osamu Tezuka basically wanted to turn manga into low-budget um, films. But, yeah. yeah. And, and, and in fact, I've, got a, I've actually got another great example, like Dona Guy, the, the dude who did, I think, Devil Man and shit. Like, you know, he was yeah. basing that shit off the Korean War, which was literally happening, like, what, 300 kilometers from his doorstep? So, like, obviously, there, there is that undercurrent. So anyway, talking about... So anyway, you have these proto-otaku... And then you get people like Tomino and Arno and shit like that who come up because they're about teenagers. Yeah, they're around teenagers when the otaku start because the otaku don't really start developing into their own until like the late, I would say, late, I'd say mid 70s and maybe early 80s is when they really start kicking off. And, you know, people like Arno would have grown up in that, would have grown up in, when it's first blossoming. So obviously. And you, and you also got to think about, like, the generation four. Like, he's probably, his grandfather or whatever was probably in World War II and that type of shit. So that that nationalism makes quite a bit of sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, uh, not to, not to, uh, not to, to um, um, bring up the uh, specter of, uh, of uh, Miyazaki or anything. <laughs> But oh, uh, uh, you know um, the um, um, the uh, loss, um, the uh, Japanese loss in World War Two, is the reason for um, a lot of um, European sympathies. Um, you know, in uh, Japan, right? Which is um, which is why in uh, a lot of a lot of Miyazaki films, um, you'll see um, a lot of um, European inspired ar um, architecture and uh, society. Um, and whatnot as well. So, so, um, so back in the late eight, back in the eighties, basically, uh, the, you, if you go back and look at the books published back then, there were like a lot of books about uh, Japanese uh, business practices, uh, the five S system. I, even I was taught it um, in Sri Lanka, um, in school because um, they have sort of sort of adopted it as because. Like Japan is one of the few Asian nations, was the only Asian nation which had um, basically ascended to um, become a developed country. Um, well, you know, the, the interesting fact is that, like, if you look at like the Meiji era, like they turned themselves from a, 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 a like they turned themselves into like a fifteenth century style, it, like be, I'm going to use fifteenth century as just like a basis. They went from that to like an industrial, like from post-industrial civilization in the matter of like 30 years like the amount of like progress they made from like the 1800s as well they had like the industrial revolution and all that shit and this like they had all the developments the west had in a span of like 30 years 
Like, so, yeah, um, yeah. I think uh, I think something to sort of um, highlight is that you know it wasn't it wasn't like the uh, industrial revolution came to to uh, Japan and now it's sort of lift you know lifted f- you know from uh, um out of out of the caves or something you know where uh, um Japan um Japan um for a v- you know a very long time beforehand was you know was a, v- a very dignified you know v- very um, hierarchical um society with with um long traditions um you know um, a great um a great um, tradition of making of making great art and great works um you know poetry etc you know um you know so which which is probably why um as far as far as, 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 far as i could tell um they sort of took the um, industrial revolution so well was because they were their um, yeah. their, their society was sort, was sort of of that caliber already so you know he just sort of uh Work for I mean, it's also the it's also the fact that like you know they're looking to see what's going on in the world. I mean, for example, like the opium wars and shit. Like the Chinese literally got their asses kicked by four hundred <laughs> British guns. <laughs> yes, I think like they're looking at they're, they're looking at this shit and they're like, oh my god, like we've fallen behind. Like these these barbarians that were on our doorstep four hundred years ago, um, they've got technology that we can we can't dream of in our wildest dreams. Their ships are more powerful than ours. Their guns are powerful, more powerful than ours. Mm. Like we've fallen behind. Yeah, there's also that aspect as well. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think though, um, I'm I'm mostly I'm mostly referring to the '80s because uh, back then the the Japanese were really flexing uh, their muscles. For for instance. um, the current uh, building, uh, parliament building in Sri Lanka, for instance, uh, was built by the Mitsui Group, uh, a Japanese uh, consortium. Um, and um, yeah, so basically, Arno, uh, his all his whole life, things were just going up essentially. Um, yeah, and then he sees it crashing quite down. Yes, and that's that's what when you get Eva. So. So in in a sense, you can you can kind of see Gunbust uh, as the happy version of um, of Eva, sort of. Because yeah, sort of. Actually, you can kind of see it when he was in his youth. You know, when Arno was happy and not nihilistically depressed. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, um, anyway, guys, um, I do um, I do have to go now. Um, it was um, it was it was and, a uh, actually my throat is getting sore. <laughs> I yeah. see. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 a good time to end. Um, well, um, uh, for, 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 for um for me anyway, because uh, yeah. I see. All right. So yeah, that, that, I, um, the tangent kind of took a bit out of me, but like I can go for a few more minutes. But like you know, um, yeah, like literally, uh, like these type of like it's very like if you look some of the like the history and the the cultural stuff about like the otaku and where they come from, it's a very interesting rabbit hole to go down to go down. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, by the way, the the refrigerator in, uh, or not the refrigerator, the the vending machine in um, uh, in Eva, it, it's the same as the one in Gunbuster. If you remember that, uh, yeah, I think it would uh, not be. I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I think um, Demo, uh, is, um, so, yeah, says um, Ava borrowed their vending machines from Goodbuster. Yeah, it, yes, it yes. Well, that, you, you that, know, you know, the ship gets destroyed, and they're like, "Fuck, we're going to do these vending machines." Oh, we'll just sell them to this nerve organization. That'll be fine. We need some money. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, uh, about the history, like it, it's kind of hilarious that um, the, the Soviet, it's the the, the, sto- the story set in the twenty thirties, but the Soviet Union is still is still around. Well, I, I can explain that. So, um, the the so to give you a long and short of it, the Japanese have a very interesting story with Russia. And um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, yeah. Um. Before you go on, uh, um, I um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave now. Um, yeah. I'll uh, I'll um. Okay, I'll see you guys I'll later for the night, the next video, because I'm I'm free all week, so. Maybe next week too, if this lockdown doesn't shut down. But yeah, like um, J- yeah. Japan and Russia have a very interesting history. Um, it's a bit complicated, and mine's getting sore, and I don't have like all the facts on the table. But yeah. Yeah, to yeah, give yeah, you the TDR, the, the 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 TDR is um, Russia was actually making moves into like Japan, and um, the Japanese were afraid they were going to get invaded by a bunch of like barbarians. 
from it's, Siberia. Yeah, all right. Yeah, um, from Siberia. It's complicated. Yeah, like, um, um, yeah right. To be continued, right? The period is not my forte. Like, so, but that's yeah. the basic gist. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think uh, other other examples um, of uh, the Jap- the J- Japan centric and and nationalism would be that um, um, obviously Noriko's father is an admiral in the Imperial Japanese Army, so the Imperial Japanese Army is still around, and uh, the the headquarters of the of the Space Force are. Uh, in in the imperial capital of Tokyo, as well. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just viewing there's like Arno having like his wet dream. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You're allowed um, to dream. Y- yeah, and, and, and basically, when the dr- dream came crashing down, well, it, when when when, when uh, it was no longer the case that Japan was going to be number one. Well, let's end the fucking world. Uh, let's end the fucking world in in Eva. Hey, 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 look! If Japan can't be number one, then no one can be number one. That's the, that's the Asian mentality. Uh, y- yes, yes. I mean, uh, it's, it's... I, I, by the way, to our viewers, I am joking. I am joking. Um, you can kind of see it in Shin Godzilla a little bit as well. So let them fight. Yes. Let them fight. Although, on the plus side, you get some pretty good fucking shit. Like, like Japanese creators, when they're depressed and they, like, they just fucking pour their heart and soul into it, like, Jesus Christ, did you get some good shit out of it? Yes, and now, and now that he's not depressed, he makes uh, shit like uh, Eva 3 plus 1. Which... Yeah, I, 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 yeah, 3 plus 1... Well, I, was, I wasn't exactly Gucci on. I'm, I'm going to be watching the four, fourth one later this week because um, in a podcast that I might be talking about it. But uh, uh, I'm not really talking about like the movies in that one. I'm more talking about like Ava, like where it stands in like history and shit in terms of mecha and crap. But uh, but but yeah. Um, speaking of like the Ava movies, they definitely feel fucking out of place. Like it just doesn't feel like Ava. Yes. Yes. Um... To keep it short, uh, the first two films f- felt like I don't know some blockbuster um, Hollywood type of version of um, Eva. The first two films, the third film was a confused clusterfuck which didn't explain any- anything and which didn't make uh, any and sense. And they also did get more gay shit because you know you got to sell it for Joshi's. Yes, I don't know. They, they kind of threw in uh, Kaori's character there. And uh, in the in the last one, the last one was just uh, trash. Um, yeah, but um, I haven't watched it yet. But uh, a couple of my buddies fucking hate it, and some of my buddies like it. So it's quite polarized. Quite the polarizing topic. Um. Yes. So, have you watched Die Buster, the sequel to Gunbuster? No, I've heard mixed. I've heard not Don't great things it. about it. Yes, don't watch it. It's trash. It's just a cheap, uh, cheap cash bra- cash grab made out after everybody talented left guy nuts. Yeah, like basically, like I, I took one look at it and I'm just like, Meh, I don't know. Yes, I'm, don't I'm watch perfectly it. fine. Uh, the the opening song sounds nice though. Um, what did you think of the ali- alien uh, character designs? The alien designs. Um, I thought they looked cool. Like it definitely, it definitely gives off this thing of like inhuman thing we can't comprehend from the edges of space that are here to eat our souls. Like, I think it mm. captured it perfectly. Um. Yeah. So I, I guess what what do you think that the message of the sh- of the show is? Is it just uh, hard hard work and guts uh, will conquer all as as uh, the coach would say, or like, uh, what is it if there is any? I don't really fucking know. Like, for me, it's like, I, I kind of feel like the show is a very, like, idealistic, hopeful message of that, you know, through hard work and shit, you can overcome anything, including, like, blowing up an entire alien race and going through space time. And then 12,000 years, 12, years later, when your wrecked as fuck robot is getting reaching the atmosphere, a bunch of lights, like, highlight and say, like, welcome home. Hmm. Uh- 
about the um, the aliens, um, another complaint which McAloyd v- was um, like, I, I think it's a bit too idyllic that they would actually remember remember you. Like, what if there's like more wars or shit? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be fair, in like, what happens if there's like like what happens if there's like more wars that devastate the planet and we had like a post apocalyptic shit or people forgot about the records and then you just show up and like who the fuck are you? Yes, I mean, it was 12,000 years. I mean, I'm surprised that she she isn't treated as like some sort of like legendary figure, you know, that one day the the prophesied Messiah will come back home. That's that's basically what happened in Die Buster. But um, uh, because the the, the Die Buster ends um, like with the characters in Die Buster setting up those lights. Um, And uh, well, they don't actually. They just show the two lights coming down. Uh, th- that's where it ends. Um, but and, and it basically was one overpowered character. Wanted to, but still, it's still don't watch it just because of that. It's still trash. Um, well, it sounds trash. Com- like why would I want to watch fucking bunch of people setting up lights when I've already seen the end result? Like, it's, yes, yes. like who gives a shit about these characters? They're gonna be dead in like twelve thousand years when the main characters show up. Um. Uh, so, so about the aliens, another complaint which uh, McAloy had was that uh, well, they should have been in- introduced earlier. Um, do you think that they should have been introduced earlier in the story? Um, because they, they show not. up all. Yeah, they, they show up. Uh, bring up. Yes, I like. I think the idea of not introducing them right away is to help build up that tension of like the threat that's coming. Like, they've literally just BTO'd, like, our Admiral, and they've taken out one of our best ships. They're not here yet, but they're going to be here soon. Um, I, I think it maybe helps, like, add tension. You know, yes. this looming threat that's coming. You know, it's like the barbarians at the gates. Yes, yes. I, 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 I thought that, that, that too, like, you don't, you don't want to, like, uh, humanize the barbarians at, at the gate, right? Um, oh, if you no. I, if you think about, for instance, um, what's his name, the the, um, the guy who made that, that animated series with um, uh, about the Romans, uh, the unbiased history of Rome or something, uh, Dove Hat Dove Hat or something. Maybe you might you might have not uh, seen seen that that series. I know you. Dove Hattie. Dove Hattie, yeah, the, the one with um, Vojax and F- Fields guys. It's a faggot, and... by the way. It's a really fucking terrible series. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So... Yeah, well, but basically, the idea is, like, they build them up as a threat. Like, you know, it's, it's like Alien or Aliens. Like, let's use Aliens. Like, would the movie have such impact if, you, you know, the Marines went into the, into the colony and they just encountered Aliens right away? Like, you know, they open the door, aliens jump out and kill them all. Like, you know, it kind of comes off as a bit anticlimactic. You know, you won't have the cool scenes like the, um, you know, the Marines going for the colony. They see, like, signs of battle and shit, and there's, like, no one there. There's, like, food all over the place. You know, half-eaten rappers of, like, oh, someone was here, but they're not home now. You know, I, I think, you know, not having the aliens show up immediately helps build up that sense of tension. You know, a bit of dread, like, this this looming threat. Yes, I'll, I, that, that's basically what I thought too about that. Um, about the final episode, um, it, it apparently cost them more to make it in black and white because the last episode is, is in black and white. Uh, yeah. it, it, and, it, and, and it cost them more than it would have cost them if they had just colored it. Do you think that it added anything or made anything worse or better having it in black and white. I, I like it as like a touch to showcase, like, you know, they're in this weird, like, time loop kind of BS shit. I see. Because the, the reason. I, I, we... I, I just liked it as like a stylistic choice. Like, I like I thought it was all right for what they're going for, you know, then the like mega time dimension and yada yada. I, uh, the, I think the reason which they gave, which. Uh, which, which they gave was that uh, the reason that it was in black and white was that they wanted to sh- show the scale of just how uh, how huge um, the, the battle and uh, the bomb uh, as well how how huge huge everything was by making it in black and white. I don't know if it worked or not. 
I, I guess I, I think like I, like as as far as like them trying to convey like how big the shit is, I think they did an okay job. Yes, I I think basically what the what I imagine that they thought is that um, uh, if it's in manga, which are black and white, um, I think it's a lot easier to show the scale of things. But but that's also because it's a still image, so it's, it's still different. Um, have you seen? Have you seen? I guess I guess like this could be the last question, given that we have talked for a while now. Yeah, I've have talked seen... for almost like two hours. My throat's getting sore. So, have you seen uh, the time dilation uh, team? done any better anywhere else and was it done good here fuck that's a hard one um I, i'm kind of blank on this question but um i i actually do have something to add about the time dilation thing um i think the time dilation thing actually helps add to the characters and the sense of what they're losing. Because, like, when Noriko comes back from Earth, you know, it's only six months to her, but it's, like, been several, like, it's almost been, like, a decade on Earth. And everything feels a little different. Like, some buildings are gone, some buildings are not there anymore. I mean, I think, um, I think the time dilation thing helps add to, like, the sense of, like, isolation. D did you expect a time dilation thing when you watched it? No. Me neither. Me neither. Me neither. Um, I, it was a, it was a nifty. I I like the idea. It's just um, like I, I like the idea. It's just fucking um. I I mean, aside from using it to convey the idea of like that that lot out of time kind of feeling, or like that feeling of like isolation, that like you know, I mean, six months ago, you know, you had there's this park there, and now it's like a mini mall. It's like when the fuck did that happen? Yeah, I also think that uh, it made the time skips feel a, a, m less obvious, less worse, in my opinion, um, th this mechanic in the story. Um, it, it's not like the time skip in the Sword Art Online, for instance. So, yes. Um, what um, would you rate it as? What would you rate it as? Let me go check what I did rate it as, because I think I rated it pretty high. Let me check what did i rate it been a while where is fuck where is gunbuster you motherfucker where there you are um i rated this a seven out of ten i see i see uh i would rate it um either eight or nine i would say yeah and... like this is a very good ova like it isn't deep or anything but this is very good, and also it's it's just very good to watch for like historical purposes as well. And it, and it's fucking Studio Gynax when they were good. Like, fuck is wrong with you? Watch it. Yes, this this is, this is basically Garan Lagan uh, done right. Uh, because in Garan Lagan, you you don't feel the you don't feel the the themes are the same, like about uh, humanity overcoming everything with hard work and guts or whatever. Mostly guts uh, in in Garan Lagan and. Um, but like, and everything gets um, larger and more and more huge. But in in um, in Garan Lagan, and for that matter, in Die Buster, I just didn't feel like uh, I I didn't feel I, like. I, like I, I, I think huge. with like I think with like the thing of problem with Garan Lagan is that like it keeps on trying to like, but basically it got too grand for its, it got too big for its own fucking like things. Like literally, when you have a mech. That's as big as a galaxy throwing around fucking planets. Like, how can you top that? Like, you you have to keep on scaling up to more and more ridiculous shit. Yeah, it just became it just became a meme, really. Um, I... <laughs> like, like halfway through the show, the mix now is the size of a planet, and it's like, okay, is this fucking like Unicron or some shit? And then it like becomes like to the point where they're chucking planets around in galaxies, like. Like how many fucking robots? Like Jesus. Yeah, it it doesn't feel uh, they don't because um, at the end of Die Buster, for instance, the the heroine becomes as large as the uh, as Earth, but it, she it doesn't feel like that. It, it just feels like this is a stupid cartoon. Um, 
<laughs> and I think I think they did a good job in Gunbuster at, at that. Uh, it's b- b- basically a, a very good rule of cool show, as good as you get, in my opinion. Yeah, this, this um, show's great. Um, watch it. Oh, fuck, I'm tired. All right, so that that's it. Um, I think. All right, bye, Craig. Um, bye. Peace out. So thank you for listening, and as usual, now get out.